It's episode 16 of the Handy Homebrew Show here on... Yeah, I checked. It's okay. It's I had the to next make one. sure. We are continuing, <laughs> Matt Paulson, our conversation on off flavors. Right. We've, we've made beer. We've fermented beer. We've bottled beer. We've caked beer. We've served beer. There's something just not right about the beer. So right. What we're trying to do is we're trying to troubleshoot some issues that common home brewers have. Right. Last week when we went over four of them, and you can check that episode 15, it's right below us. This week we're going to move on. What's our first off flavor that we're going to try to spearhead before it becomes a problem, Matt Paulson? Well, the first one we're going to talk about that's, I don't know if it's very common. It could be common. Um, the alcohol flavor. Oh, my. Alcoholic. Oh, yeah. So alcohol. Now, Not alcohol. Right. Alcoholic. Right. <laughs> So it could be considered an off flavor, depending on what style of beer yeah. you're brewing. Yeah. So um, basically, I'm using my uh, cheat sheet from... So our, uh, that's our research department. Brew, brew your own. Um, so these, this can happen for, for a couple of different reasons. The two, the two main reasons... Get that burn. That, yeah, right, that you burn get that, that It's in your nostrils and right. stuff, and you're like, this is not... I'm not drinking an imperial stout. I don't want any of that burn. Right. This is a pale ale. Why am I getting yeah. a burn? Ugh. Well, Ugh. one of the ver- the first things you can look at is your temperature that you're fermenting at. Oh, okay. anything. You're not so, controlling. I mean, that's it. gonna right. So that's gonna be a really. It's gonna give you an off flavor. Anything above about 80 degrees. Hot, hot garage in the summer. Right. A and guy it creates, just in the garage. It creates something called a fusel alcohol, which Whoa. that's what gives you the burn. That's the from burn. that. It's like um, rubbing alcohol. Right. Um, the next thing is that, um, I can't remember where I was going with that one. Well, I, I know that sometimes you get the alcohol burn when you mash too low in your temperatures as well. Right. You get too simple of sugars. Right. The yeast destroy it like it's nothing. Like they tear through it and what's their byproduct? It's alcohol. It's alcohol. So they make alcohol very, it becomes very thin, very wine-like Burning jet fuel. Out jet fuel. I made a few of those whenever I first I, started home brewing. I've made more than a few of those. <laughs> um, but that's so sometimes, guys, you don't want that alcohol burn. A good beer doesn't have to have burn. And just because a high gravity beer uh, is a high gravity beer doesn't mean it has to have burn. Right. That's, it's a lot of balance between your grain bill, your your leftover sugars, the yeast strain you use, fermentation temps. It's it's a it's a balancing act to right. say the least. Right. Um, okay, so the next off flavor we're going to talk about is cider. I love ciders. Now, we talked a little bit about this um, last week with the acetaldehyde. 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 Um, which is somewhat similar, but that kind of smell and flavor was more apples. Mm-hmm. And this is more of a cider type flavor. Okay. Um, okay. Sour this, and puckery. Yeah. Ah, so, okay. so this could also be caused by a couple different things. Um one of those is is the acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde. Um, acetaldehyde. Um, another one is if you use too much cane sugar or corn sugar Simple in your sugars. recipe. Right. Simple so that goes again. back to another thing. Of, you know, it goes back to the alcoholic flavor. Yeah. Um, this can produce a cidery flavor, an apple cider, of apple cider vinegar and flavor. And you're not looking for that in your beer. No, no, looking no, no, for that no. in a cider, right? When you're using actually fermentable uh, fruits, not right. a not a beer flavor. It's right. an off flavor, right? And you can also get this from your fermentation temperature being oh, too hot. Oh no! Again with the fermentation, guys, control your fermentation temperatures. If you even have, if it's in the basement, yeah, put it somewhere just, that stays constant. Yes, constant and below. Or in the range of what your yeast yes. package says to keep it in. Yes. Don't. If it's above 80, guys, you're going to ruin your batch of beer. <laughs> it's not going to be good. Unless, Unless you're doing saison. a saison. <laughs> or another, there are other styles where it's cranked up at certain times for a certain amount of time. Um, but it's usually not happening in your garage in the middle of June when you're like, oh, I'll just leave it in here. It'll be fine. It's going to be bad. It'll be it's 112. Gonna be real, it's going right. to be real bad. Right. Um... <laughs> The next one is what we call DMS, which stands for di- dimethyl sulfides. That's what I was going to say. Um, this is an off flavor that I've never experienced. Never. Not this um, I don't what? know that many people have. Yeah, yeah. The, the off flavor is cooked vegetables. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't like <laughs> cooked vegetables that are vegetables cooked. <laughs> yeah, I don't want I don't either. effing beer. But Delicious. So, anyways, the only thing I have to say about this one, I don't have any experience with this. I read and kind of uh, looked at um, a guy's website called Brewlosophy. Brew, oh, that's a good one. Oh, Brew he's Losophy. awesome. There's um, a lot of experiments. Yeah, so he did an experiment with his boil. So the way you create DMS, they say that 
Um, if your boil isn't rigorous enough, or you get that slow, you're trying the, to save propane, so right. you have a slow one, or you leave a lid on, or you leave a lid on. They boil. say that you can get DMS. He has a very, very cool experiment. I'm not going to go into it. You can go check it out, brewlosophy.com. Um, big sponsor of the show. Big sponsor. <laughs> you, thanks, brewlosophy. I was waiting for you to wait for you to say that. I was forgot what my tagline was. Right, right. There. I've been right. Corporates um, in my head, man. So he says basically that. Every experiment that he did on a homebrew level, he was not able to produce enough enough DMS to be noticeable in his beer. So you have to go out of your way, and you still probably won't notice it. Probably not. So, yeah, that's why all these commercial breweries, they have vented stacks. And oh, yeah. It boils off, and it's a rigorous... They're not trying to save a couple of pennies worth of propane or electrical bill. They roll that boil. It says yeah. rolling boil. Yeah. Do a rolling boil. All rolling right, Matt Paulson, what do we got next? Okay, so Off next, flavors. I'm going to throw these two kind of into the same group. D M S. Oh, wait. Um, grassy flavors or husky or grainy flavors. Now, Ugh. yeah, the grassy thing, hey, I mean, if you're into, you know, the uh, chlorophyll-flavored IPAs, or would that be a GPA? I don't know. That's a grass that's pale, pale ale. ale. Right. <laughs> Um, <laughs> most of the time, these two off flavors are caused by the storage of your ingredients. Getting lazy. Yeah. Letting so the moisture gets. So to let's them. let's go over let's go over how we store our our grains and our hops. Hops are in the freezer. In the freezer all the time. Always. If you have um, the ability to uh, vacuum, what's seal. The vacuum seal vacuum those. Seal. Um, do Thirty dollar every... vacuum seal on Amazon. Yeah. Buy in bulk, vacuum seal them in small packages. Boom. Yeah. One do ounce that. Packages. Um, now, as for for uh, the storage of your grains, you want it in a, an airtight container stored in a cool, dry place. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to throw another one kind of in there with this, and it's moldy flavor. Ooh. The worst thing you can do to your grains is not store them in an airtight container, and they get uh, they absorb absorb moisture. Because that's all they want to do. They've been dried. Right. Oh, they're just waiting right. for moisture. So you don't want them to absorb any moisture. Because you may not see mold growing on them, but it's you can happening. get that mold flavor. So, uh, just uh, Matt Paulson, you can just go to Amazon and get like a, a, a pet food airtight sealable container. Yeah, for yeah. 20, 30 bucks that yeah. holds a whole 55 pound bag of grain. That's how I, I have store one in mine. my basement, threw it in there, yeah. I clamped the lid down. I That whole bag will last me a year. And you know, I don't really even control the temperature. Mine sits out in my garage, yeah. but it's airtight, airtight and it's dark most of the yeah. time in my garage. So it's not being exposed to the, the, the atmosphere and the... Right. Just so, so invest in those little things. I used to just wrap them up in the plastic bag. They came in and I'd wait a couple of months before I brewed a kit and it didn't always turn out the best. Right. I wouldn't say it was moldy, but, but fresh grain is what you want to go with. And if you can't, well stored grain is what you want to go with. Yeah, um, another part to the husky or the grainy flavor, um, depending on, and we covered this a little bit with the mills last week. How you mill your grain? Um, corona. Uh, the Corona mill is the is the two plates that grind it, and then a the roller. roller. How you do that? Right, oh, man, like a titty you can roll it right. Um, so and I, and like we said, we're not saying there's anything bad about Corona mills. No, nothing bad about them. No, we know a lot of people that use them. Yeah. Um, but there is the chance to get that husky or grainy flavor from the husk of the grain being ground too fine. Too fine. Right. Like a powder. And then it will come with your work. Yes. It will follow your work now. Yes. You want that husk to work as a filter, just like you would rice holes. Right. If you had a batch of beer that didn't have a lot of husks in it. And you want to crush it, <clears throat> not pulverize it. Yeah. You want to smush it, not pulverize it. So, yeah. um, off flavors are not a good thing. No. In some cases. Correct. There are times you want all flavors. And I will tell you this. If you ever go into a homebrew thinking that you're not going to encounter all flavors, you're wrong. Because you will. It's going to happen. You're going to make a mistake with your equipment. You're going to make a mistake with ingredients. You're going to make a timing mistake or a temperature mistake. It's okay. We're here to help. If you got yeah. something with all flavor, ask us. We'll let you know. Go to handyhomebrew.com. Check out the forums. If you got all flavors, we want to hear about them. We have all flavors that we can't really identify sometimes. Sure. That's the kind of stuff we're looking for with all flavors. Yeah. So uh, that right now, that covers part two of our off flavors. Now, what we're going to talk about in the future, Matt Paulson, is we're going to wrap up all flavors and a few simple techniques to get off flavors that you do want. 
Yeah. In certain batches of beer. Yeah. You do want in those flavors. In those certain styles, styles of beer. You so we will talk about that in the future. Make sure you go to handyhomebrew.com. Uh, add us on the forums. Make sure you chit-chat with us. Go on our YouTube page, uh, Twitter, all that good stuff. Share us, like us, subscribe. I think it's about time to get out of here, Matt Paulson. Nope. What? Not time yet. What time is it? Pints and picks. Time for pints. Episode 16, Handy Homebrew Show. We were talking about off flavors. Now we're talking about beers without off flavors. Definitely. It's pints and picks. Pints and picks time. So we're going to start off with the beer that I chose because this is probably one of my favorite beers. You've done a clone of it. Even. Yeah, I did a clone of it that we actually did for Pints and Picks. This is the Cardinal Pale Ale oh, from so Nebraska good. Brewing Company. So good. 6% alcohol, 42 IBUs, and you think, 42 IBUs, that's not very bad. That's or not very high, I guess. Wait until you smell this beer. It's going to be fantastic. Oh, now, I we have them in our, 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 beer. our Speedle IPA glasses helped uh, develop in part with Dogfish Head Brewery years ago. So these are to uh, add the aroma and you're supposed to get all the, the nose feel and stuff for it. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this beer as you spill it all over the place. It's right. really it's, exciting It's all over the table. Now, if I'm going to drink a pale ale, I'm going with one of my favorite comedies of all time. My Cousin Vinny. Have you not seen My I've Cousin seen Vinny? My, my Cousin, Cousin Vinny was the movie I used to watch every Saturday morning on like TNT. So they love like, the dead guy around, right? No! That's Weekend at Bernie! Oh, oh my god, man. My now Cousin I'll Vinny. Let you go on. Two kids are accused of a crime. Joe, Joe Macchio. Okay. Not Joe Macchio, what's his name? Ralph Macchio. Ralph it's Joe Macchio. Macchio. and Ralph Macchio. They're accused of killing a guy. And he has a lawyer in the family, and it's his cousin Vinny, who's never taken an actual case in his life, has to get him off a murder in South Alabama. It's hilarious. It's got Marissa Tomei in it, Joe Pesci's oh, girlfriend. She plays Mona Lisa Vito. Uh, it is a hilarious movie. I used to watch this every Saturday morning. It was always on like TBS or TNT. Uh, <laughs> God, this is, this is timeless. It's freaking timeless. <laughs> My cousin Vinny. All right, let's get in here. Yeah. Fine, Sam Pig. Oh, it man. Has some flavor to it. You huh? can smell the cascade. Mm. That's probably my favorite you, part of this beer. I don't, don't even need like to, I don't need to drink this. I can just smell it. Whoa, whoa, time out. You don't like bitter beers. I know I don't. That's a it, ten years ago, this is an IPA. I know. This is it. I know. Oh, that's good. It's very crisp. It's very refreshing. It's, it's, it's got that like juice like quality at the end of it where it's just good. It's really, really good, mm. solid malt body. God, that's a good beer. And the flavor of the Cascade Hops, I really am starting to love Cascade Hops. Cascade yeah. Hops. I use them a lot in my IPAs. Oh, I yeah. Our triple Hops and Cascade is our big aroma hop. Oh, man. Shout out to Nebraska Brewing Company. Big sponsor of the show. Huge. Speedle Glasses. Dogfish Head. We got Dogfish Head calling us all the time to get on right. the show. But we're here for you guys. We've got to go record a podcast now. Yep. It's episode 16 of the Handy Homebrew Show. Go to handyhomebrew.com. Check us out. Like us. Subscribe. We want your feedback. Share us. Share us. us. Yeah, share us. Share us. Sharing is caring. We're not beer experts. Just beer enthusiasts. We're just beer enthusiasts. Cheers. That wasn't on at all. Are you serious? <laughs> oh, shit. We'll have to do it again. No, let's, let's just use the, the sound from there. Yeah.